Hi everyone. Thanks for tuning in to EV Buyer's Guide for the news this week, October 16th. It's been a busy one for electrified vehicles, some major announcements, some charging infrastructure conversation, and a whole lot of concepts leading up to the Tokyo Mobility Show. Without further ado, let's get you plugged in. When it comes to making headlines, it's hard to beat Tesla. And this week they announced that the Cybertruck unveiling event will officially happen November 30th, 2023. This comes about four years after the original unveiling of the Cybertruck, and it comes a few years after we were originally promised the product. Many are waiting to see what the final numbers for the Cybertruck will actually be, and we may not get all that information on November 30th, but we'll at least see vehicles on the road, not just the ones we've spotted, and we'll get customer feedback to see what the heck the Cybertruck actually is. If you or anyone you know has received an invitation to the delivery event, and you'd like to bring EV Buyer's Guide along, please feel free to reach out to us at hey at autobuyersguide.com and we'll see if we can make it happen. Tesla sleuths seem to have found evidence that the Model 3 may have a Plaid model coming soon. This would be contrary to Elon's prior remarks that the Plaid moniker is only going to be used for the highest performance models, the Model S and the Model X currently, but it seems like in the owner's manual there is reference to a Plaid, Ludacris, and a couple other variations to the Model 3 on the Highland model, which we have yet to see in the United States. Tesla has recently recalled about 54,000 Model X built between 2021 and 2023. The specific issue is related to the vehicle being able to sense whether there is low brake fluid or not, but this is an issue that wasn't found by consumers, instead members of the Tesla team. What makes some of these Tesla recalls unique, and I may say recalls, is that a lot of the issues are able to be fixed with an over-the-air software update. So when a regular consumer hears recall, they assume that means the vehicles are being brought in, they're being adjusted there at the service center, and then they have to go back out. But in the world of electrified vehicles and over-the-air software updates, many of these issues can be fixed before the consumer even realizes there's a problem, which is the case here, as that over-the-air update has already been released and made available to Tesla owners that will fix the problem before a recall is even issued. Not everyone was so lucky in the recall world, and this time it's Ford recalling Mustang Mach-E's again. This issue is with 2021 and 2022 Long Range and GT models. The specific issue is sort of a revisiting of a previous issue with a high voltage connector that seems to be able to overheat in DC charging situations as well as wide open throttle applications on a repeated basis. When this high voltage connector overheats, what people have seen is a loss of power in their vehicle and what has previously been addressed seems to have not actually solved the problem. Many owners say that they have experienced the issue again after the original fix, and so it looks like Ford is gonna to have to bring these models back in for a more permanent solution. There's a new electric vehicle hitting dealership lots, and this time it's gonna be BMW. The BMW i5 is set to arrive very soon and may actually be at your local dealer as we speak. The i5 falls in line just above the i4, but more in line with the 5 Series than we've seen in other electric vehicle models and their gasoline counterparts. While this model is going to be fairly expensive, I don't think we're going to see a lot of BMW i4 owners shopping between i4 and i5, and I think most purchasers of this vehicle are going to be current BMW owners who were not interested in downsizing and want to stay with something familiar within their own brand family. More good news for BMW, or BMW owners, is that BMW Group has announced they will be adopting the NACS connector. This won't just apply to BMW, but the BMW Group, which includes Mini and Rolls-Royce. The NACS connector will make its debut on US and Canadian models starting in 2025, though BMW has yet to be more specific on how extensive the rollout will be and what models may or may not be covered. Kia has announced a new long-range trim, calling this one the Light. The Light already exists as a trim model, but only in the standard range. This way, you're able to bump up to a larger battery without buying all the extra features. The Light Long Range will start in just under $46,000 and come in about $2,500 less than the next model, the Wind. As we saw last week, Tesla incentivized their lease offers and made the Model 3 and Model Y more affordable. This week, Hyundai has said the Ionic 5 and Ionic 6 are also getting lease offers and should come in just under their competitors. Now, the Ionic series doesn't currently qualify for the federal tax credit on a purchase, but they do get it with a lease. For those interested in the Ionic models, it's likely gonna be the least expensive way to get into one for the first couple years, and if you do wanna buy it afterwards, you would still have benefited from that federal tax credit. If you are thinking about getting a Hyundai Ionic 5, there's a new model you might wanna be aware of. 
For 2024, you can now purchase the Hyundai Ioniq 5 Disney 100 Platinum Edition. This has been called a first of its kind collaboration between Disney and an automaker. The most obvious feature of this model is going to be the gravity gold matte paint that you'll find on the exterior, as well as the Disney inspired wheels. For better or worse, you won't find any mouse ears in the wheel wells. You'll also see Disney 100 badging on the exterior, interior, dash, and seats. And you'll also be greeted with a special Disney themed intro when you enter the vehicle. Now to some EV news, ChargePoint says they are ready for NACS adoption across North America. For those who don't know, ChargePoint's business model is selling and maintaining charge stations to individual private owners. They say they've already begun rolling out NACS and CCS connectors on a single unit, as well as having upgrades available for current ChargePoint owners. There was another electric van announcement made this week, this time a concept from Nissan. Now we looked at some of these Nissan concepts last week, this time we're looking at the Hyper Tour and the Hyper Punk. The Hyper Tourer model is said to be geared towards individuals who appreciate the finer things in life and enjoy the companies of friends and associates. Now here at Buyer's Guide, we're a big fan of minivans, although I don't expect to ever see this one quite hit the road. The Hyper Punk would seem a lot more likely, though I would expect to see a significant decrease in polygons before this vehicle hit production. The Hyper Punk is a crossover SUV that's been tailored for content creators, influencers, artists, and those who embrace style and innovation. After seeing the concept, I'm sure it won't be everyone's style, but I'm sure Nissan will find some fans of the design. There is some real world news, not just concept, in the world of Nissan, and this time it comes to the Nissan LEAF. Nissan has been able to certify the battery for the 2024 Nissan LEAF, thus making it eligible for $3,750 of that federal tax credit. If you purchase a 2024 model before the end of 2023, you should be eligible for that portion of the federal tax credit, but obviously your individual situation may vary. Toyota has teased two new concepts for the Tokyo Mobility Show. Now with these teasers has not come a lot of information, so I'd like to hold off on covering it further, but it does seem that they have made a concept of the Toyota Land Cruiser and a Toyota pickup that are both electric. With that Tokyo Mobility Show coming next week, I'm sure we'll have some more information. In the meantime, the confirmed news is that Toyota has also adopted the NACS charging standard. This will affect Toyota and Lexus models, though maybe not all of them. Toyota did say it's likely to make its first appearance on the 2025 three-row electric SUV. Election manufacturer Enphase has launched a new IQ EV charging line. This new line is meant to integrate seamlessly with their battery and solar systems. While this system may not be for everyone, it's nice to see more options popping up across the market and to make green energy an easier thing to wrap our heads around. And finally for this week, we have an EV camper reveal. Established in August of 2022, the company Grounded has announced another electric camper option. What's unique about this offering is that they're building this camper in a commercial delivery van. But no, not the Rivian. For those that may not know, in the last couple years, General Motors announced a new brand called Bright Drop. Bright Drop is an all-electric commercial van division. And Grounded is going to build their G2 out of the 600 line. There's a lot of information yet to be announced, but I do suspect that we'll see a pretty high starting price as well as a pretty high top end price. But with a van that has all wheel drive, 250 miles of driving range even when fully loaded, and the ability to DC fast charge, I'm sure there'll be a market for this grounded G2. That's the news for this week. Thanks so much for stopping by. If you have any thoughts, questions, comments, or concerns, please leave those down in the comment section below. If you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, consider doing so. If you want more EV buyer's guide or auto buyer's guide, find us in the community page on our YouTube channel, Instagram, Facebook, all those other social places, and we'll see you in the next one.